Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. we got a great show for you today, and I know that you're going to love it. All right, so what do we have today? Oh, man, we've got some special stuff. We're going to talk about food today. I love food. I eat food every single day. I eat more than I should, which would explain a few things, like my weight, my waistline, things like that. But gosh, I love food. We're going to be speaking with Matt Neville, who is the operations manager of Harvest Right Freeze Dryers. That's going to be a fantastic interview, I'm sure of that. He's going to tell us all about how they work, uh, what you can do with them, um, how you can use them to prepare for, you know, downtimes, disaster. Uh, There's just all kinds of advantages of freeze-dried food over dehydration, canning, freezing, you name it. Um, I didn't realize exactly all that went into it until I did the research on it. So you're going to love that. That's Matt Neville from Harvest Right. Okay, what's happening in my life? I am busy. I am busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. Uh, I tell you, I've got publishing that I'm doing with White Feather Press and Publish Your Dream. Um, I've got the Home Defense Show. Then I also have Front Lines of Freedom Radio as well that I'm supporting. Very, very busy, you know, plus helping my wife homeschool the kids. But, man, I'm having a good time. What about this weather? 14 inches of snow out there right now, and as soon as I finish with this show... I have got to go out there and snow blow the driveway, a big driveway, and it's like 15 degrees out. So I am going to take my time with the show. It might run a little long simply because I don't want to go out there. Uh, Not to sound wimpy, but man, it's cold. It's cold and I'm old. That's my only excuse. Before we get going, I'm exhausted. There's something I have to do before we can go on with the show. Here we go. You can guess what it is. Oh, yeah. I can smell it. Ah, yeah, it's ice cold. If you're new to the show, I just cracked the dew. The Mountain Dew. The big green monster. Oh, it keeps me going. It keeps me alive. It keeps my blood pumping through my veins. I was in the news... And I went to BearingArms.com. I saw this uh, news article that just kind of blew me away. And it was titled, One state makes bid for most anti-gun state in just one legislative session. Can you guess which state that is? You know it's got to be either on the west coast or the east coast, right? It's safe to say that New York is not a pro-gun state. No kidding. Or perhaps it's better to argue that it's safe to say it. SAFE is all upper caps, S-A-F-E. After all, one of the most anti-gun pieces of legislation in recent years was the New York SAFE Act. However, New York isn't done, not by a long shot. Instead, they are offering up nine anti-gun bills for the current legislative session. So basically, they're doubling down on dumb. You know, hey, it hasn't worked yet, so let's try more of it. Here's a list of what was put forth. Note the descriptions are not mine, but copy from the Democrats. Prohibit bump stocks and modifications that increase rate of fire. This bill, S-6902, introduced by Senator Brad Holloman, will make it a Class D felony to possess a bump stock or similar device. Though the The reason they're doing that is the bump stock was used in that Las Vegas shooting Uh, where 60-some people died. It just increases the rate of fire. Establish extreme risk protection orders. That's scary. This bill, S-7133, introduced by Senator Brian Kavanaugh, will allow courts to issue an order that would seize or prohibit the sale of guns to individuals who are likely to act in ways that would result in serious harm to themselves or others. How do they know that? It's like they're predicting the future. 
seize guns from individuals who are likely to act in bad ways. I watched this movie with Tom Cruise. It was called The Minority Report. And he was part of, it was set in the future, obviously, sci-fi. And he was part of the pre-crime division. And they had developed this way to predict who would commit a crime before it happened. And then they would go out and arrest the guy, even though he hadn't done anything yet, and throw him in prison or kill him or whatever they did with him. It sounds like New York um, is ahead of the curve. They're ahead of everyone else. They are living science fiction right now because they are to determine who is guilty before they actually commit a crime and then strip away their Second Amendment rights. Boneheads. All right, effective background checks. This is S5808A, introduced by Senate, Senate Democratic Deputy Leader Michael Guianaris. It will establish a 10-day waiting period, extending the current three-day period to conduct background checks for individuals. What good is that? They're already banning half the guns that are, are out there. You know, this is, boy, this is just death by incrementalism. They are incrementally getting rid of every Second Amendment right that, that New York State people have. All right, so three-day to a 10-day. Prohibit undetectable firearms. <laughs> I shudder to even think what that is. It will prohibit firearms, rifles, or shotguns that cannot be detected by X-ray, magnetometer, or metal detector and make their sale, transport, or possession, or manufacture a Class D felony. Boy, they're going to have a lot of felonies here, which means they're going to have a lot of felons. And the felon basically is going to be an ordinary guy like you or me. If I were to go to New York State, oh man, they would take one look at me and say, hey, he's the host of the Home Defense Show. Let That's a Class D felony right there. Let's throw this guy in jail and never let him out. Of course, in order to implement this, they'll probably have to put x-ray and magnetometers all over the state. Create a firearm violence research institute. Oh, wow, yeah, let's, let's get colleges involved and let all these anti-gun professors do this, in, this research on gun crime. Good move, New York. Allow victims of negligent manufacturers to seek compensation. Yes, we need more lawsuits. Let's, let's let them sue every gun producer, gun manufacturer in the country. Boy, if you are in New York State and you manufacture guns, you better move. You better get the heck out of there because you will lose your shirt. Enact the Children's Weapon Accident Prevention Act. That's uh, S3353. Will make it a crime to fail to securely store a weapon to prevent injury and death due to use or handling unintended by the person authorized to possess the weapon. So basically, if you don't lock up your gun, you're going to jail. Of course, we should all lock up our guns. But should you legislate a human right to this degree? I don't think so. I think it's a slippery slope, uh, as New York citizens are finding out right now. Close the out-of-state resident mental health record loophole. I didn't know there was a loophole. This is S7605, introduced by Senator Brian Kavanaugh. There's a recurring bonehead. We'll close a loophole in state law and allow the state to check the mental health records of an out-of-state resident when that person applies for a state gun permit. Well, you know, in Michigan, uh, we have something called the HIPAA law. Um, our health records are protected. So, and I know Utah has something similar. So, hey, New York State, bite me. That's all I got to say. You don't like that? Call 1-800-BITE-ME. Go to, you know, biteme.com. You want to find my health records. I'm getting excited. I should relax. This is what anti-gunners consider smart, common-sense gun control legislation. Seriously, one bill outlaws guns that don't exist. What, yeah, those would be the ones that can't be detected. One wants to bar people convicted of a thought crime. That'd be the Minority Report bill, straight from, uh, you know, like the 24th century. Convicted of a thought crime from being able to buy a firearm in an era when taking issue with something like illegal immigration is described as a hate crime. You know, I'm going to talk about illegal immigration in segment four, uh, and I think I must be uh, one of those uh, big hate crime guys. 
because I don't like it. Yes, this isn't a grab bag of anti-gun talking points by any stretch of the imagination, now is it? It's like New York is trying to make a bid to be the most anti-gun state in the nation all in one legislative session. You know, the problem with this is none of what they're trying to do is going to work. Gun control doesn't work. It never has. It never will. So the more gun control you have, the more it's not going to work. Thank you, New York State, for wasting everyone's time and money and banning their human civil rights. All right, folks, we're about out of time uh, for this segment. When we come back, we're going to be speaking with Matt Neville, the operations manager from Harvest Right Freeze Drying. Uh, going to have a great conversation with him. So while we're away, go ahead and check out HarvestRight.com, see what they're all about, and then check out our sponsors, EliteFirearms.us, talk to Larry Jackson, see what he can do for your family, and then Firearms Legal Protection, FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical, and get your family protected now. Okay, this is Skip Coraline, Home Defense Show. We'll be back in two minutes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. My name is Cedar Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, FrontlinesOfFreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. As promised, we have a special guest on the line. His name is Matt Neville, from the operations manager from Harvest Right Company. Matt, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Yeah, Skip, we're excited to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having us. All right, great. Matt, we, we appreciate uh, you coming on the show. I know your time is valuable there. You guys are doing a, a booming business over there. Matt, for the benefit of the people who don't know about Harvest Right, Tell us a little bit about your company, how you started, is it family owned? Uh, give us all the all the details. Yeah, great great question. So, Harvest Right and forgive my voice, a little laryngitis here, but Harvest Right started about 5 or 6 years ago and we make freeze dryers. So, freeze drying is the best way to preserve food. At Harvest Right, we invented the world's first home freeze dryer. You know, freeze drying is a is used commercially, very widespread commercially. You know, you can buy backpacking meals or hunting meals that are Mountain House or other brands. But to actually have the opportunity to freeze dry your own food in your home hadn't been available until Harvest Dried invented it about six years ago. So a new invention to the world, and and they're amazing and have really taken off. Yeah, you know, I have heard your advertisements on the radio. That's how I first heard about you. You, you have uh, Ron Paul, I think, advertising uh, Harvest Right on the radio, correct? <laughs> yeah, Ron Paul. Ron has a freeze dryer, um, loves his freeze dryer, uses it like crazy. And, yeah, so he does some of our ads on the radio. Yep, that's right. <laughs> well, it always helps to have a, a big name and a big voice, you know, behind your product. And you certainly you know, scored big with that one. Now, you're you're a family-owned business, correct? Yeah, so of all things, my, my dad and I started this business, and it's a family-owned business um, that has pretty quickly grown into having over 100 employees. 
you know, last year we sold over 10,000 freeze dryers and, and there are over 25,000 freeze dryers out there um, in the United States. And we sell all over the country and all over the world. So freeze drying has started to become pretty popular and it'll be fun to talk with you a lot about the different types of foods people freeze dry. Why is freeze drying so much better than bottling and canning? Who likes to freeze dry and why are they doing it? Um, all those kinds of things will be a lot of fun to talk with you about on your show today. Well, and we're going to do that, Matt. But first, I'm not done prying into your personal life. So uh, Matt, <laughs> okay. uh, t- tell us about you, Matt. you got you got a wife. you got kids. Uh, hula dancing is your hobby. What, what What's going on? Huh. Well, so I do have a wife and three kids, three boys. So my wife is definitely outnumbered at home. <laughs> and... Um, She's okay with that, though, and we love the outdoors. We love hiking. We love mountain biking. We have lots of friends and things like that who love hunting, and and so we like to be outside a lot. Um, as you can imagine, with boys, three boys, they they live and play in the dirt, and, and that's how we like them to be. And yeah. so um, that's just kind of how we are in our home. So we have a lot of fun here in the mountains. We're, we're located in Salt Lake City, Utah, and so – we have great opportunity with the mountains and the hills to get out and and get in them and and just have a lot of fun. So yeah, you know, Matt, I love driving through uh, Utah. Um, I was just went through there. I don't know about five months ago or so because my wife uh, is from the West Coast. She was born and raised in Newport, Oregon, and so every time we drive out there, about once a year, we drive around Salt Lake City and all oh, the mountains there. They are just gorgeous. And another really nice thing about Utah is it's a very gun-friendly state. So, you know, I can carry my my guns, uh, you know, when I'm going through there. I I don't have to worry about, you know, not like Chicago where you get pulled over and strip searched and, you know, they give you a lobotomy when you say the word gun. So Utah is, boy, it's just a a great state uh, to, to be in. So, you know, I envy you. Uh, a little bit, because it's just such a beautiful, beautiful state that you have, and it's very family-friendly uh, state, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. We we kind of think we, we have one of the best-kept secrets in the country. Very gun-friendly, quite conservative, lots of, like you said, the mountains, the outdoors, and hunting, and hiking, and backpacking, and lakes, and streams, and rivers. Yeah, we kind of feel like we have one of the best-kept secrets. Also, the economy is always booming out this way. Mm-hmm. So, um, ooh, <laughs> Lots of people come from California and Arizona and, and some of these other states to Utah, and we kind of just wish they'd stay where they were sometimes, but because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we love our state the way it is, and we kind of like being the best, a, a great secret, uh, for lack of a better term. So, yeah. Anyway. You know, that that's one of the problems. There are so many people who are leaving California simply because, you know, they trash their state. It's gone to hell in a handbasket, and the big concern is, Okay, you're leaving California. We don't want you to come here and trash our state too. So you're welcome, uh, but uh, you know, you know, pick up and turn off the lights when you leave, kind of a deal. But um, <laughs> all right, now, now, Matt, you're the operations manager there for Harvest Right. Before we yep. get too far yep. in that, uh, some people, you know, most people are going to be listening to this via podcast uh, at their computers. So. Where can people sure. go right now to just surf along uh, your website while they are listening to us? Yeah, so go to harvestright.com. So harvest, H-A-R-V-E-S-T, right, R-I-G-H-T, dot com. All right. Now, we're about halfway through the first segment. We're speaking with Matt Neville, operations manager at Harvest Right in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, Matt... How exactly does freeze drying work? Because I was always under the the misconception that well, it's kind of like a, a fancy dehydrating a dehydration process. And while it does dehydrate, it's you know it's a heck of a lot more than that. Uh, tell us what exactly is freeze drying? Yeah, so don't ever call a freeze dryer a dehydrator. That's where we live around. Just for, uh, okay, right. so. Huh. So, but I understand because a lot of people don't know the difference between freeze drying and dehydrating. Essentially, freeze drying is 
far superior to dehydration in every way. So the best way I can do this is by illustrating an example. <clears throat> One of our customers has a great YouTube channel called Ballistic Barbecue, and he bought a freeze dryer. And this customer freeze dried. A, so he, he builds sandwiches. He builds burgers. He builds copycat burgers and, and Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, and, and, and he grills steaks and things like that. I, I like him so already, man. his videos. Yeah, yeah, this guy's awesome. And on one of his videos, he uh, talks about why he bought a freeze dryer. He said, look, I live near a fault line. I love the outdoors. We want to eat healthier. We want to be prepared just in case. We have a garden. And he said, I'm going to show you how this freeze dryer works and what it can do. And so what he does in his video is he freeze dries raw hamburger patty. He freeze dries cheese. He freeze dries um, a green chili mixture that he's going to use to build his burger, and he freeze dries onion rings. Wow. Then what he does, and he shows you, okay, here it is freeze dried. And when it's freeze dried, it looks exactly the same as it went at the same way it did as when it was fresh. So it didn't lose its shape, its texture, its color. That raw hamburger patty still looks like a raw hamburger patty. You know, those onion rings still look like onion rings. That cheese still looks like cheese. The uh, peppers still look like peppers. So what he does, is then he submerses that raw meat that's been freeze-dried and will sit on the shelf for 15 to 25 years, mind you, mm. if he decided to keep it on the shelf. He puts it in water, and he lets it rehydrate. How, how, behold, how long it does it right take? back to a raw hamburger patty. It takes him about two or three minutes. Drops it in the water for two or three minutes, rehydrates right back to a raw hamburger patty. Wow. Does the same thing with the cheese, does the same thing with the chilies. And, uh, the, and, and similar with the onion rings. Then he takes you out to his grill, and he says, you're not going to believe this. Throws it on his grill, the burgers, starts cooking the burgers. They're cook, they cook just like a fresh hamburger would. Then he puts the rehydrated cheese on. Cheese starts melting just like fresh cheese would. Huh. Puts the chilies on. He builds a, a full burger with the ingredients that he had freeze-dried, and he says, look, this freeze-dried food can sit in my, on the shelf, mind you, not in the freezer, not in the refrigerator, but on the shelf for one week, for five weeks, for five years, for 10 years, for 25 years, and it's going to be fresh. I add a little water to it, and it's just like fresh food, but it will sit on the shelf indefinitely. And, it, and he goes on to obviously eat the hamburger, show it to you, and he says, you wouldn't believe that this was freeze-dried. You would not believe that this is fresh. It, I, I could trick you right now. Because the food that comes out of a freeze dryer stays just like it was fresh. Wow. It keeps all the nutrition. It keeps the texture. It keeps the flavor. It keeps everything just like fresh food. All it does is remove the water. Compare that to dehydration. You know, you could never dehydrate those things I was just talking about. You could never dehydrate cheese or chili, chilies. Um, you could never dehydrate a raw hamburger patty. So dehydration removes about half the nutritional value and essentially leaves you with something that's kind of a chewy um, snack. Whereas when you freeze-dry food, you know, you can freeze-dry a full-on lasagna. You can freeze-dry smoked turkey or smoked chicken or scalloped potatoes or salsa or shrimp or steak or guacamole. You can freeze-dry anything you eat. You can put it on the shelf to eat it in two weeks or in 25 years, and it's going to be just like it was fresh. Wow. So it's very different than dehydration. You could never dehydrate those types of things. Yeah. Now, Matt, we're almost out of time for this segment. This is all good stuff uh, that you're telling me here, and I'm sure the listeners are they're learning uh, left and right. You know, I did some, uh, I, I hate to use uh, a four-letter word in front of you, but, you know, I've been dehydrating for years. And you know How what? Dare you. Yeah, I know. I, well, I didn't know about <laughs> Harvest Right, but you know it, this is very encouraging for me because they're, you know, I, I tried dehydrating sliced potatoes, and you know you can dehydrate them, but they don't taste the same. They turn black, and it's right. it's just right. not it's gross. You know, and this sounds it's like not yeah, it's not not even close to the same. So I, I'm encouraged by this. You know, hope springs eternal, and hopefully spring will be sure. here soon. So, Matt, when we come back, let's talk more about, um, you know, the process of freeze-drying, and then let's compare freeze-drying with dehydration, 
with freezing, with canning, because I do a lot of canning as well. Sure. And sure. it sounds sure. like, geez, uh, this could really open up a lot of possibilities for me and my family. So, okay, folks, um, we are speaking with Matt Neville, the operations manager at Harvest Right in Salt Lake City, about freeze drying. Uh, we are going to take a two-minute break here. When we're out there, um, go to harvestright.com and check out the Harvest Right operations there and their products. Uh, also check out our sponsors. Go to Firearms Legal Protection, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. Check out how they can help protect your family against the criminal justice system should you have to use your firearm for personal offense. And then go to elitefirearms.us. Check out Larry Jackson. Find out how he can provide your family with the right firearms for the job. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. This is Felix Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. We are speaking with Matt Neville, the operations manager at Harvest Right uh, Freeze-Drying Company out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Matt, this is just an awesome conversation that we're, we're having. You know, I am sold 100% uh, on this Harvest Right already. But, you know, let's talk some more about uh, freeze-drying, how you do it, maybe the actual units themselves. Matt, uh, let's compare freeze-drying with the other types of food uh, preservation. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> so freeze-drying is essentially far superior to all of them. Kind of like you mentioned, you've got canning and bottling, you've got dehydrating, and you've got freezing. When we can and bottle food, uh, the food loses immediately half its nutrition typically because we have to put it under high heat and you have to use typically add lots of salts or sugars to preserve that food, and the food will last a year or two, sometimes a little bit longer, but then it starts to be kind of iffy when that canned food is sat in your basement for, for a few years. Dehydration is very similar. You lose about half the nutrition, and the food typically keeps six months to a few years, um, depending on how you store it, and the food quality is, is pretty low. Freezing is an interesting one. Um, a lot of us have freezers. We, we have multiple freezers. Maybe we like to hunt or we have a garden and we've got a freezer full of meat or a freezer full of vegetables, or maybe we just have a freezer full of food just in case. Um, freezing is interesting because typically food will keep in a freezer one to two years. Um, it starts to get freezer burned, starts to taste bad, starts to taste different. And you always run that risk of 
what happens if I run out of, if, if the power goes out and I lose all the food in my freezers, yeah. right? I've got a yep. freezer full of meat, the power goes out. Oh man, I just lost $5,000 worth of meat that I just got in Alaska or wherever that might've been. So you run that risk with freezing and the quality really starts to degrade over time. Compare that to freeze drying. Freeze dried food will sit on the shelf so you don't have to worry about additional refrigeration for it. You freeze dry the food, it goes on the shelf. Freeze dried food keeps all the nutrition in it, unlike canning and dehydrating where you lose almost half the nutrition. And freeze dried food will last up to 25 years on the shelf. So if I were to go hunting and I wanted and I or fishing and I caught a bunch of fish, okay, I can put that fish or that game in my freeze dryer and it'll freeze dry the food in about 24 hours, 24 to 36 hours. And when it's done, I'll pull it out, I'll package it, I'll put it on the shelf, and it'll be good to eat in two weeks or in 25 years. But it's going to taste just like it was fresh. It's going to rehydrate, have the same texture, consistency, flavor, all those things, just as if it were fresh. So freeze drying is far superior to any other way of preserving food. Matt, I'm seeing all kinds of uh, advantages here. I mean, uh, think of, uh, oh, you're, you're taking off all the water. So you're also getting rid of a lot of the weight um, and the bulk that you have with, with things like canning. Um, you know, could, could I take, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big uh, bow hunter. I love to deer hunt. And I, I, well, I shot like four deer last year, you know, and mm-hmm. th- basically they all go in the, in the freezer. I might can a little bit of that. Could I just take those back straps and go ahead, slice them up, put them in the freeze dryer, and then uh, they'd be like new five years from now? Exactly. That's exactly what people do. Hmm. So those back straps, you take them out. You can either cook them or leave them raw. You can freeze dry it both ways. Freeze dry it, and you can eat it in five years or 10 years or 25 years. Wow. Additionally, you're right. As far as lightweight, when that water comes out of the food, it becomes so much lighter weight. So that's why you can make your own backpacking and hiking meals, right? Mm -hmm. You can make your own lasagna and freeze-dry it or your own beef stew and freeze-dry it, your own chicken noodle soup and freeze-dry it. If you're a steak and potatoes kind of guy, you can freeze-dry it. You can make a full-on Thanksgiving dinner with turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, and stuffing and the pumpkin pie and ice cream and freeze-dry all of those things. Take them with you in the mountains or in the hills on your hunt or or your excursion or just have them as amazing food storage, right? Yeah. Customers love to freeze-dry meals, but even leftover meals that might go to waste and freeze-dry them and either have them as amazing food storage or, or a food supply and also use them for day-to-day, you know, eating meals or in the, on, on, in the outdoors for hunting and backpacking meals. Yeah. Matt, I just had a, a, a funny thought I want to share with you. Um, you ever watch uh, that that movie uh, Back to the Future? You know, oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in in the second movie, you know, Back to the Future Two, they've got this scene where they're sitting around the table and they they uh, are going to eat pizza. So they they dump out this tiny little pizza on the on the pan. They put it in the the rehydrator, and then in five seconds uh-huh. it comes out. You know. Uh, totally you know fantastic great great looking pizza and then when i was a kid i would watch the these uh cartoons called the jetsons have you ever seen reruns of those yeah. you know and of course of course yeah and, and they would just do the same thing it, it sounds like you guys are you're you're getting close to to something uh of that of that caliber it's funny you would say that we have customers who freeze dry pizza do they really they fall <laughs> they fall on with freeze dry pizza and so, it, it, you know, it, it, it turns into almost like a great pizza cracker, but also there are ways to rehydrate it so that it's just pizza again. And so, to your point, that's exactly right. Freeze drying isn't like dehydrating or bottling and canning. It's so much more than that. You know, the average family throws away $2,500 worth of food each year, just ends up in the garbage. Yeah. And our customers love their freeze dryer because now they don't waste anything. Mm-hmm. You know, when bananas are going ripe or strawberries are, are going to start to get mold on them or cheese is going to go bad or a meal that we just made has sat in the fridge for a day or two that we might not get to and ends up going in the garbage. Well, our customers don't let that happen. If they make fajitas for dinner and there's leftovers, but they don't think they're going to eat, they'll freeze dry those fajitas. 
mm-hmm. if they have a garden that they're growing, man, I can't get to all my produce. I'm going to freeze dry my, all my produce, my corn, my apples, my peas, my peaches, whatever it might be. And my zucchini, I can freeze dry it and it's going to taste amazing. So much wow. better than any other way to preserve food. So yeah. this little freeze dryer, just by cutting down on waste, will pay for itself. Freeze dryer will pay for itself in three to six months, typically, as you start to use it. You know, free, you can buy freeze dried food, commercially freeze dried food. A lot of us might do that for the outdoors or for our food supply. But if you get a freeze dryer and you use it, you can make ten thousand dollars worth of freeze dried food in the first year of owning a freeze dryer. Wow. So it really pays for itself in four to six months as you start to look around and say, I'm not going to waste this food. I'm going to freeze dry it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, and, and not to mention the quality is far superior to anything you could buy. Yeah. So freeze dry will pay for itself really fast that way. Well, okay, Matt, let's uh, get into the, the process now. Now, I don't want you to tell me anything company proprietary because then you'd have to kill me, and, and I certainly don't want that. <laughs> so exactly how does your freeze dryer work? What is it doing to the food, and how does it do it? Got it. So it's as simple as this from start to finish. What the customer has to do is put the food on the trays and press start. The freeze dryer takes care of the rest. So let's say you just had a barbecue and you had leftover um, pork and uh, baked beans and ice cream and you smoked a turkey and you had some chicken as well. You put all those things in the freeze dryer at the same time and press start. What the freeze dryer does is a lot more than that. First, it cools the food. It freezes the food to between 30 and 40 below zero. Wow. So very, very, very cold. Then, once the food is that cold, the freeze dryer creates a powerful vacuum, which is an environment like outer space. And at that point, in a powerful vacuum, it begins to gently add warmth to the food. And as we gently add a little bit of warmth to the food in a vacuum, the food is minus 40. Um, The moisture starts to come out of that food. And the freeze dryer measures the moisture content in the food and beeps when it's done and tells you to come take it out. So some foods might freeze dry in 20 hours. Some foods might freeze take 30 hours. But the freeze dryer is smart and knows when to come take it out. So whatever you put in there, the freeze dryer will figure it out for you and, and make it really easy on you. Yeah. Wow, that, that sounds great. Um, so you can freeze dry any food imaginable. Almost any food. Almost <laughs> any food. Peanut butter won't freeze dry. So if you get a freeze dryer, don't put peanut butter on it because there's no water in peanut butter. It's all oil. Oh, and okay. so freeze drying takes out all the water is what it does. So, so don't freeze dry peanut butter. <clears throat> of course, all your fruits and vegetables, your meals, your meats. If you wanted to to make fajitas or, or scalloped potatoes or chicken or corn and you know, all these things, anything you can – pretty much think of will freeze dry except for peanut butter even ice cream freeze dries right ah. yogurt freeze dries um raw eggs freeze dry so you will have customers who will crack i kid you not 80 eggs whip them up pour these raw eggs in their freeze dryer and when they come out they have a true egg powder you add a little bit of water to it and you make an omelet hmm. um you wow. know milk freeze dries chocolate milk freeze dries once you get a freeze dryer, you start looking around and you start thinking, man, what am I going to freeze dry next? Because it starts <laughs> to be a lot of fun, and it's pretty cool, all the things that you can freeze dry. And I, I should say you can also freeze dry, you know, scrambled eggs. You know, you can make scrambled eggs with cheese and ham and bacon, however you like them. Freeze dry those, and, and they're amazing. Right. Well, so. or Matt, here's the acid test for you. If you can say yes to this question, I mean, you're probably going to sell a 1,000 units right here. Can you freeze dry Starbucks mocha frappuccino from the jar? <laughs> I, you can definitely freeze dry coffee. So if you brew coffee, you can freeze dry. All we right. have customers all day long who freeze dry their coffee they've brewed. Yep, very, very common. In fact, we have small businesses who have purchased 20 or 30 of our freeze dryers and They just freeze dry coffee to make instant coffee. So that way it truly is instant coffee that you add a little bit of hot water to and it's instantly just like it was when you made it. Oh, wow. That's just awesome. So, yes, you can. 
you know, yes, I've, you can. I've already spoken to my wife about this, and she is well aware that this year we are going to get a Harvest Right freeze dryer. I've already let her know. I said, okay, now, honey, put this in the budget. Uh, we're going to save up for this, and we're going to get one of these units because we we just spend so many hours and hours and hours every fall. I mean, it's physically taxing all of the the canning that we do because, you know, we have our own garden, and uh, we grow all of our own oh, food. Yeah. We either, if we don't grow it, we go out back and we, and we kill it and gut it out. So, um, <laughs> boy, I could really save a lot of my time and get a higher quality um, food by doing this. So I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, Matt, we're running out of time, but can you talk about um, the different units? I think you have three different units. What are people's options for this? We have a small, a small freeze dryer, a medium freeze dryer, and a large freeze dryer, just to keep it simple. Um, so freeze dryers kind of for each budget and, and need. They range anywhere, you know, between, you know, sixteen or seventeen hundred dollars on up to about three thousand dollars. Again, you'll make ten thousand dollars worth of freeze dried food uh, in the first year, so they pay for themselves real quickly. But our most popular freeze dryer is that medium size. That medium freeze dryer, you know, you can get 1,500 pounds through it in a year's time, 1,500 pounds of food through it in a year's time, and like I said, make $10,000 worth of freeze-dried food. It's a great family-sized freeze dryer. Now, if you have a great business or a great garden or you you hunt and backpack just a ton and you, and you really want to produce a lot of food, that large freeze dryer is probably right for you. Mm-hmm. But I would probably say that the great majority of freeze dryers sold, probably 60% of them, are that medium size because it's just the perfect family size freeze dryer to start building on amazing food supply and also use day to day for healthy snacks, healthy meals, meals in, on the trail, etc. What are the dimensions on your standard size? Yeah, so that medium size freeze dryer is 20 inches wide and about 30 inches tall and 25 inches deep. So to put it in perspective, it's a little bigger than a microwave. It's almost like a dorm room refrigerator, you know, like a mini refrigerator is kind of the size of it. Mm -hmm. Most people put their freeze dryer in their garage or their utility room, or if they have a good size pantry, um, they put it in there. So not a, not, not a, a tiny, tiny countertop item. It's a serious piece of equipment that is an amazing thing that lots, thousands and thousands of people are putting in their homes. Yeah. You know, Matt, we are out of time now, but this has been a fascinating conversation, and you have sold me on Harvest Right uh, freeze-drying. Uh, be, before we uh, go, uh, just give us a, a last word. You know, why should people do this in like two sentences and then your uh, web address so people can go find out about Harvest Right. Yeah. Well, we, the, the truth is we live in uncertain times, right? We don't know if there's economic collapse around the corner, natural disasters. It's good to just have a mind towards preparedness for just in case. Freeze drying is the best way to make that happen. There is not a better way to have food on the shelf with, you know, freeze drying is the best way to do it. So, for those reasons, along with the recreational fun uses of a freeze dryer, it starts to become an appliance that you're going to be using every day. Okay, and they can go to harvestright.com, correct? Yep, go to harvestright.com, call Harvest Right. You'll find thousands of videos on YouTube, customer-made videos that will talk about it as well. So, yep, just reach out, start to learn about it. You'll really love it. All right. Matt, thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure, Skip. Okay, folks, we've got another two-minute break, and then when we come back, we'll be in segment four. I'll do the wrap-up, and we'll talk more about uh, freeze-drying, and I will not use the four-letter word uh, while I'm talking. Um, Go to harvestright.com during the break. Check it out, and uh, send me emails, skipcoriel at hotmail.com. Tell me what you think about that. Okay, folks, this is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to my dad's Home Defense Radio Show.
You're gonna love it. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum, the host of Frontlines of Freedom, a nationally syndicated military talk radio show. The president cut the aid we're giving to the U.N. to support Palestinian refugees, specifically including education for their children. That sounds cruel, but it's really smart. Iran giving $100 million this year is Hamas's greatest sponsor, and UNRWA, the U.N.'s relief agency in Palestine, is its partner. UNRWA is headquartered in Gaza. It's the U.N.'s single largest agency with over 11,500 employees in Gaza alone. Its annual budget is over $1.2 billion. Bucks. Several hundred million each year is spent in Gaza, and we provide over $368 million of that money. For the past decade, the Center for Near East Policy Research has copiously documented how UNRWA in Gaza is an integral part of Hamas's regime in Gaza. UNRWA underwrites the jihadists by paying for its school system and its health care system, among other things. In every major missile campaign Hamas has carried out against Israel, UNRWA's facilities have played key roles. Missiles, rockets, and mortars have been stored in and fired from their schools and clinics. Haven't heard about that in the news, have you? UNRWA teachers and students serve as human shields for Hamas missile launches. Their ambulances are used to ferry weapons and terrorists. Their officials serve as Hamas mouthpieces in the propaganda war. In the UNRWA school curriculum, the overwhelming message in nearly every class and nearly every textbook, students should seek martyrdom in the jihad against Israel. The UN has been funding this for generations. It's time for every civilized nation to stop funding the terrorist movement. Thank you for joining me for A Minute with the Colonel. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. And thank you, Colonel Danny Gillum from Frontlines of Freedom Radio, for that minute with the Colonel. We appreciate your insights. Guy's a, a wise man. He's done a lot of things for our country. Oh, man, he, he was a war planner over in the Middle East. Uh, he did two tours, combat tours in Vietnam. He was a, a platoon commander and then a company commander a graduate of West Point, all-around nice guy and my friend and host of Frontlines of Freedom. You can check uh, out the show that we do every week on frontlinesoffreedom.com. All right, Matt Neville, operations manager from Harvest Right Freeze Drying. Awesome guy. Uh, we were talking a little bit off the air. I really like him. like him a lot. You know, one of the things that we spend a lot of time in our family doing is preparing our food because my wife and my eight-year-old son Phoenix cannot eat processed food. Their body just does not tolerate it, does all kinds of foul, vile, nasty things to them. So we have to prepare all of their food from scratch. Uh, we have to grow it or we've got to kill it ourselves. I'm not joking when I say that. 
We eat a lot of venison. Uh, we have our own chickens, have our own eggs. Uh, and then we grow all of our own food, organic, non-GMO, you know, non-hybrid seeds that we use. So it's very, very clean food, but it does take a lot of work. So I am always looking for any way I can to cut down on my workload for food preservation and preparation because it just takes up so much of my time and I have very little uh, as it is. And, you know, I went ahead and I did all the research. You know, I just don't listen to the guests and then accept what they say. I go out and I scour the Internet and I talk to other experts and everything that I'm reading really coincides with what Matt was telling us from a harvest right. Uh, it's, it's just an awesome idea. Uh, they're the only ones out there that I could find mm -hmm. that actually have a process like this and that have units like this. So go to harvestright.com and check that out. You know, I, I love canning. It's a ritual for me. But I got to tell you, I'm 60 years old now. It's getting tougher and tougher all the time. For me to take that giant canner filled with boiling water and jars and lift it off the stove, on, carry, carry it over to the table, set it down, let it cool off, dealing with all this steam. It's just a lot of work. Um, and I'm ready to do something different. So I will be getting one of those Harvest Right freeze dryers from harvestright.com. Definitely check that out. Uh, I've had a lot of things happen that have oh made me a little leery of of home canning. I mean, obviously, sometimes you run across a jar of food, vegetables or whatever. You'll open it up and boy, you get that terrible, terrible, awful smell. Well, that's called botulism and it will kill you. Either it wasn't prepared properly or you, you just made a mistake, you did something wrong, or, um, you know, for whatever reason, the seal didn't take, or maybe it was just there for too long. You have to be careful of that. You know, if you're going to do home canning, you need to rotate your, your food supplies, eat the oldest stuff first. Uh, right now, we're doing an inventory on all of our canned goods so that we can decide how we're going to plant our garden. And that's uh, one of the shows we're going to have coming up next month is we are going to have a show on how to prepare your home garden um, for someone who's never done it before. And even the old hands will get some really good tips. Uh, we are going to be interviewing a man named Rick Weist. He is the owner and CEO of Flowerland Garden Stores in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He is also the creator and host of the Flowerland Garden Show. Uh, that's on Wood Radio every week. It's a, uh, a one-hour show that they have. He is very, very knowledgeable. Uh, I was speaking with him this past week. This guy knows more about gardening than, than I will ever, ever know. So we will pick his brain for all things home garden. If you want to learn more about uh, Rick Weist and Flowerland, just go to myflowerland.com. You can find out all about him ahead of time. Okay, folks, now it's time for the wrap-up. This is where I tell you what I really think about any given topic. And today we will be speaking about illegal aliens. One really big topic in the news these days is illegal immigration. I think it's a big topic because so many people have been pouring across the border for the eight years of the Obama administration, and though it has lessened some under the Trump command, it's still occurring, and it's obvious to me that we have a real problem. There appears to be two takes on this. One, the people coming across the border have a right to be happy. Americans shouldn't have a monopoly on wealth and happiness, and we should want to share everything we have so that the rest of the world can experience our bounty and happiness. Two, and then there's the other side of the coin, a coin to which I espouse. And I'll try not to be too cerebral about this. Get your freaking ass out of our country. If we want you to come join us, then wait for an invitation. We'll send you a letter. America is our country, and that's why it's called America and not Mexico. If California wants to absorb all of Mexico, fine. 
let Mexico take all the inhabitants of California because that whole state is a cluster anyways. And we need to hit the reset button on California and start over from scratch. Let's face it, California is a mess and I doubt they'll ever recover. If we could take a giant hacksaw and cut through the Earth's crust straight down the San Andreas Fault and push the west coast away from us, then I'd say go for it. With any luck, they drift south and come to rest on the west coast of Mexico where they belong. Hey, let's face it, half of California is already speaking Spanish, so they may as well join their kinfolk. Now, a West Coaster would listen to me and cry, Hater, hater, you are a racist, bigoted hater. To which I would calmly respond, Shut the hell up and get out of my face. That whole PC mentality that judges everything we say is wearing a bit thin on me, and I just don't want to hear it anymore. Stop calling me a racist hater, because I know that's not true. I don't hate anyone. I don't even hate my two ex-wives, and they've done more to hurt me than anyone on the planet. I say live and let live. Just don't live here. Live in your own country where you belong. Every country should be allowed to decide who comes into their borders. Doesn't it make sense that a country without borders isn't really a country? I've got 20 acres of land, a house, and a pole barn. I feel pretty good about that. But you know what? I had to work my ass off to get this property, and it took me 40 years to get it. If I superimposed a liberal mentality onto my own property, then I wouldn't be able to control what I own. Why? Because I wouldn't really own it. A property without borders belongs to anyone with the strength and might to seize it and hold it by brute force. A country's border is its firewall, a hedge of safety guarding against all kinds of danger. Without border security, we cannot protect against foreign invasions. Without borders, we can't stop third world diseases from pouring in and spreading a planet-wide pandemic. The southern border of America should be like a speed bump, a gigantic huge speed bump that slows everyone down. Hey Miguel, hold on there now, Pedro, before you waltz on in here to take a job, a paycheck, food stamps, and start voting in our elections. We need to check a few things out first. For example, do you have any diseases? Do you have a criminal record? Do you agree with the Bill of Rights? And are you eager to assimilate into our culture? Because if you're not, then you shouldn't be here. So many illegal immigrants pour on in for the free ride, the government giveaways, and our great lifestyle. Sure, I'll agree that Americans have it good. We're the greatest country on the planet, and that's why people want to come here. But that doesn't change the fact that it's our country, and I'm not about to give it up to a foreign culture simply because they want what I have. What kind of logic is that? With that kind of logic, I can't even protect my home against a burglar. And that's what these people are. They're coming into our house uninvited. They prop up their feet on my coffee table and look over at me and say, Hey, Skip, go get me a beer, will you? Next thing you know, they'll be wanting their way with my wife. I said, to hell with all that humanitarian liberal crap. Get your damn feet off my coffee table and get the hell out of my house. Go back to Mexico where you belong, and if you want to come to America, then file an application and go through the prescribed process. The law is the law, and absent the law, we have anarchy, crime, and chaos. Wake up, America. Wake up while you still can. And you liberals, stop trying to lay all this white guilt on me. I haven't hurt a soul, and I don't intend to. I refuse delivery on the unmerited guilt of my ancestors. It's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. Here's my advice. The next time someone tries to make you feel bad about your life and all the stuff you've worked so hard to accrue, just write on the envelope, return to sender, and put it back in the mailbox. Because that tactic is BS, and it won't be working on me anymore. And that's my comment. Okay, folks, now that I'm all wound up, it's time for me to uh, close this show out. We've had a great show, and I've loved it. Uh, Again, go to harvestright.com and check out their food uh, preservation processes, their units that they have. It's fantastic stuff. What am I going to have next week? Whatever I want. Whatever it is, you're going to like it. Okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember, God, family, country, in that order. It's important how you live but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America.
Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!